Shalom, beloved. Here is a word that Yahuwah told me to share. I was not going to share it. Even now, it's reluctantly, but he told me to share it, so I'm going to share it. When my mo when my father and my mother forsake me, then Yahuwah will take me up. Psalm 27, verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then Yahuwah will take me up. Again, the Spirit pushed me to do this one. I was not going to do it, but I call Yahuwah God at times when I grew up secretly, I called him Master. The one Master I would follow, I would listen to, I called him Master. I'm not going to talk according to the way people determine because that would be a lie about how I talk to the Most High back then. And even now, I call him Father, but many times in my heart when I'm talking and communing with him, I call him Master. And he's pressing on me to share this. When my father and my mother forsake me, then Yahuwah will take me up. Those words are true. They're true. My father died when I was three years old. And I made Yah my father. When all the other kids had fathers, and I would go over their house secretly in my heart, I had a father too. It was Yah. But this isn't about my father dying when I was three. It's about my mother. When my mother got sick and was dying, when she died, we were not getting along. I tried, but our personalities, I love my mother, but we were not getting along. When my mother died, It was so much pain that it tried to smother me. It was so bad I didn't want to tell God because it was so bad. And then she died. <laughs> I'll be walking along the street. I saw a woman one time up ahead of me. I thought that it was my mother. And I called to her. I called. I forgot she had died. And I was hollered so loud. Finally, the lady turned around, but it wasn't her. I could have lost my mind. 
situation was beyond words. I had no power. I couldn't fix it. And I couldn't find her. I couldn't find her. I sat on the bed and I felt Master Spirit come in the room. I turned my head. When I turned my head, because I felt so bad, I couldn't, there were no words for it. And the pain was smothering me. Turned my head. And I went into a vision. And I looked and I was in an open field, green grass. And I looked up and I was on my knees in this field on green, in green grass, broad field. And when I looked in front of me, there was this tent. And I knew that was God's house. I thought you live in a tent. My father, pastor, but he wasn't outside the tent. And I thought, I can't. What if I go to the tent? He doesn't want to see me. He's not ready. I can't take it. The pain, the rejection. And I put my head down, thinking, how do I? Tell him I'm here. What if he doesn't want me? And when I looked up, he was standing outside the tent. He was an old, old, ancient man. Snow white, long hair, and a beard that went down to the ground. Snow white, long tunic. He was as old as time and yet as, as old and new at the same time. And when I looked up, I wanted to tell him what was going on. But all I could do was just break down and cry from where I was. Somehow I knew, he knew, he heard, he could read everything in my heart, in my mind, even in the jumbled up part, he knew. And when I stood up and I went over to him, I walked with him, talked with him. And I had one thought, don't leave me. Don't leave me. I can make it if you just don't leave me. 
and he walked me by this great body of water and we sat in the grass and I leaned back against him. He was behind me and I'm leaning on him, looking at the water and we're sitting in the grass and his robes were everywhere around us. And I was holding on to his robes. And as we sat there, I watched little animals come closer and closer. First it was a rabbit, squirrel, they kind of hung around a little bit. And then they just kept getting closer and closer. And suddenly I knew, I knew they wanted to be near God. Yeah, they want, they loved him. I looked over to my left and the deer walked up. He was right up on us. And I just knew they loved him and they wanted to be with him too. And as I'm watching them suddenly out of the water, this sea, I guess you call it a whale. It rose up. It looked like the width of two houses wide, and I reared back. And I actually got afraid, and I listened to hear him speak to tell me what to do. And I'm holding his robes, and I'm straining the hair. But he didn't say anything. And I would listen and watch as well, and listen and watch, thinking if this thing just fall forward, I'm squished. And suddenly, the knowing came. He loved God. He loved Yah. He wanted to be near him. He wasn't a threat. Just like God needed the most I so did that well. So did those other little animals. Before I left, I asked them, if I die, no matter how I die, you promise to be with me. I can take it if you just be with me. And he told me I'll be with you. When I came out of the vision, the strength I could not find, the calm I needed in my mind and my spirit was there. They weren't just words in a book, beloved. Those words are true. When my father and my mother forsake me, then Yahuwah will take me up. When your strength is gone and the mind starts doing because of grief, because of loss, because of just intense tribulation, he will take you up. I tried to hide it from him because I, I didn't have the words to explain it. Felt like it was complicated. And I felt ashamed that it happened that way. But when I turned my head, he took me into that vision. I can see that vision today as clearly as I saw it when he took me into it. He's comforting the brokenhearted. He's with you. 
and when thy father and thy mother forsake thee, be it through death, through disagreement, whatever, the Lord will take you up. I didn't want to do this this morning. The Most High told me to tell you. May the truth benefit those it's meant to reach. Be encouraged, beloved. Shalom.